A cult slaying, a singer shot by his own father, and a world-renowned legend who accidentally crossed paths with a serial killer. Here are the tragic stories of celebs who were gone too soon. Sharon Tate was one of the most beautiful actors in Hollywood before she fell victim to one of the most notorious and devastating murders of the decade. At the time of her murder, Tate was married to film director Roman Polanski, was a Golden Globe nominee for her work in Valley of the Dolls, and was known for roles in multiple films and TV series. The, the most beautiful girl that ever appeared on the show was unfortunately uh, Roman Polanski's wife. The night of the murders, Sharon Tate and three of her friends were at the home she shared with Polanski. The home on Cielo Drive once belonged to a record producer named Terry Melcher, who was also the son of famed actress Doris Day. Melcher was said to have snubbed an unhinged man named Charles Manson on a record deal, leaving Manson extremely bitter. According to Colts Uncovered, True Stories of Mind Control and Murder, this is when Manson wanted revenge on Hollywood and ordered three of his followers to go to Melcher's supposed home. Tate, her unborn baby, her three friends, and a friend visiting the home's caretaker were brutally murdered that night. Many months passed before Manson and his three followers were identified as the murderers and were all sentenced to life in prison. Tupac Shakur was born in Harlem, New York, and was one of the most well-respected artists in the hip-hop community. Like Biggie Smalls, who was also shot and killed six months after Tupac, he was taken from us entirely too soon. He was only 25 years old, and his death came unexpectedly at the hands of a gunman. Tupac was in and out of prison, and his gang-affiliated lifestyle inspired him to create a certain music genre that appealed to his audience, as did his deceased adversary, Biggie Smalls. Fan favorites that are still consistently played on the radio or shared on playlists are Changes, California Love, and Hit Em Up, to name a few. Honestly, I feel like I could represent my generation so much because I honestly did not care whether I lived or died. In the 1990s, it was no secret that the gang rivalries between the East and West Coast were steadily increasing and becoming more dangerous. Sadly, in the case of Tupac, he was shot and killed after leaving a Mike Tyson fight in Las Vegas in 1996. Tragically, he passed away from his injuries six days later. Although no one was officially charged with Tupac's murder, police suspected fellow hip-hop artist Orlando Anderson, who was also sadly gunned down in 1998 per MTV. Tupac is best remembered for his incredible music and acting roles in films like Juice and Poetic Justice. In death, Shakur became even more of a rap legend. Dominique Dunn was on her way to the top when her life was tragically and suddenly cut short by an extremely jealous ex-boyfriend. Dunn was best known for her roles in films like Poltergeist, where she portrayed the teen daughter of the family who was haunted by evil spirits in their house. Oh yeah, what do you know about it? Warn you! Ask Dad! Ask Dad! The movie became a cult classic, and Dunn was well-received by both critics and producer Steven Spielberg. There was no doubt her future would be bright. According to Vanity Fair, the young star grew up very affluent and well-educated. She was the daughter of journalist Dominic Dunn, whom she was named after, and her mother Ellen, who suffered from multiple sclerosis. In the early 1980s, Dunn met John Thomas Sweeney, who was a chef at the fancy Ma Maison restaurant in Los Angeles. The two began dating and immediately moved in together, which is when the relationship began to crumble. Sweeney became physically abusive. Dunn managed to escape the relationship, moved in with her mother, and changed the locks to their apartment. All was well until Sweeney showed up one afternoon to the apartment when Dunn was rehearsing a scene with fellow actor David Packer. Packer heard a scream and called the police immediately. Sweeney had shot and killed Dominique Dunn and would have turned the gun on himself if the police had not arrived. Dunn was rushed to the hospital where she was pronounced dead at only 22 years old. Gianni Versace was the world-famous Italian designer and founder of the high-end fashion label bearing his own name. Versace's mother was a dressmaker, and the young Italian boy grew up around fashion, working for other designers like Mario Valentino and more. Before he knew it, he was dressing supermodels like Cindy Crawford and Naomi Campbell with his daring designs and creations. Simply put, Versace truly became an iconic designer. According to history, there was no evidence that serial killer Andrew Cunanan ever met Gianni Versace. The only thing they had in common was that they were both openly gay and possibly had some mutual friends. Cunanan was already on the FBI's most wanted list after going on a killing spree and had fled to Miami during the manhunt. For reasons unknown, Andrew Cunanan shot Versace twice in the head while he was coming home after a morning walk, and the fashion designer died instantly. He disappears. He's gone. He's underground. 
Now the FBI is hunting for him. Everybody's hunting for him. Kunanen was eventually found on the houseboat that belonged to Versace that he had broken into after the murder. Police discovered he had killed himself, but did not leave a note explaining any of his actions. The world, especially the fashion world, has mourned the untimely death of the talented Gianni Versace. Carl Switzer was best known for being a child actor who played the iconic role of Alfalfa in the R Gang comedy, which is now affectionately known to most people as the Little Rascals. R Gang was so successful that it became a television series and would employ Switzer for years to come. After The Little Rascals, Switzer found himself much older, struggling for tiny roles on the big and small screen. It was clear that his days of being a successful actor were over. He made his money working random jobs like bartending and unfortunately had quite a few episodes with the local police. This is sadly not surprising as so many child actors head down a path of destruction. On the night he was killed, Switzer and a friend went to the home of someone who was believed to owe him money. According to Pop Crush, he was shot to death during an argument over $50, the equivalent of a little less than $500 today per dollar times. Moses Stiltz, the shooter, said the former child star threw a knife at him, so he retaliated by shooting him in the stomach. Legendary soul singer Marvin Gaye sadly didn't live to see his 45th birthday. Shockingly, the man who gave him life was also the one to take his life. Gay was murdered by his own father. Gay had a career lasting an incredible 25 years, and was one of the most influential artists of his time. In his personal life, however, he never had the best relationship with his father, Marvin Gaye Sr., dating back to childhood. Marvin Sr. was a preacher and an advocate of strict morals that he instilled in his children. You don't find me around too many lawyers today. <laughs> <laughs> few deacons, yeah. It was also rumored that he had issues with alcohol, and instead of being proud of his son, he was always jealous and resentful of his musical success. After winning a Grammy Award and watching his song Sexual Healing rise to the top of the charts, Marvin Jr. seemed to be in a fragile state, mentally, physically, and financially. He struggled with depression, which led to him moving back in with his parents. The morning of his death, he was having an argument with his father that quickly became a physical fight. That's when Marvin Sr. took a revolver given to him by his son and shot him in his chest three times. According to Marvin Jr.'s brother Frankie, his chilling last words were, I got what I wanted. I couldn't do it myself, so I made him do it. Actor and comedian Phil Hartman made us laugh on Saturday Night Live and in many films. Hartman's comedic timing and the way he worked with the late Chris Farley on skits like Matt Foley, Motivational Speaker, made Hartman a household name. According to biography, after two failed marriages, Hartman met his third wife, Bryn Omdahl, who was an aspiring model. Omdahl was previously addicted to cocaine, but was in recovery when she met and married Hartman. He talked about that she'd been in rehab and had a lot of troubles, but she was great and they got along great. The couple had two children that he adored, and according to Hartman's friends, his career appeared to be thriving and he seemed incredibly content. Per the Los Angeles Times, Hartman told his friend Joe Dante, I have a plane, I have a boat, I have a great house, I have a great family. In fact, I have everything I ever wanted. It feels great. However, Omdahl's career seemed to be at a standstill, causing a rift between the couple and causing her to relapse. Her erratic behavior became increasingly worse thus leading up to the tragic night. Per biography, while under the influence, she shot and killed her husband Phil Hartman before turning the gun on herself. They were survived by their now adult children, Virgin and Sean. Truly heartbreaking. If you or someone you know is dealing with domestic abuse, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also find more information, resources, and support at their website.